Hello and welcome to Warrington and Wetley Rocks. I'm sort of outside a bit today, it being our harvest time. I can't find any harvest fields, but there's some, certainly some fields around. Now, a lot of the hay seems to have been bagged up already. Harvest is an ongoing thing, it doesn't necessarily follow the times of seasons of the Church of England. But it is a wonderful time of year when we give thanks to God for all that he's done for us all the wonderful things it gives us day by day. Best summed up in the, uh, a prayer from the Old Testament. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Everything we have in this world, the sun, the rain, the fields, the crops, everything comes from God. And we give back to him at this time of year. Well, these videos are proving less and less popular We've got uh, currently it's, as it stands less than 10 people watched last week's video so i'm wondering whether we carry on doing them we're going to have a break anyway for the next few weeks we're going to be live streaming i hope so there'll be something online but for the moment this might be the last one for a while so enjoy A reading from the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. His wife's name was Naomi. He died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, her two sons also died, and Naomi was left without sons or husband. With her two daughters-in-law, 
she left the place where she'd been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you've shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. So, so Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Ruth said to Naomi, Let me go out to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favour. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, a relative of Naomi's. Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting, and follow along after the women. I told the men not to lay hold a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, Why have I found such favour in your eyes, that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland, and came to live with a people you didn't know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. One day Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Tonight Boaz will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he's lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned over and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. Then Ruth came to her mother-in-law, and Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? And she told her everything Boaz had done for her, and added, he gave me these six measures of barley. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He'll renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, Ruth, who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. And he was the father of Jesse, the father of King David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So that was a summary of the story of Ruth. It was sort of a very abridged version. I cut out loads of verses from that. It's a little bit sacrilegious, but on the other hand, it's better than the lectionary, which just gives a, a tiny sort of snippet from several different parts in the Bible. It's good to have a look at the whole of a story like Ruth, this wonderful, uplifting story in the Old Testament, spread across four chapters, set at harvest time, much of it. Multiple tragedies, famines, death, starts with the harvest failing in Israel we assume there's nothing to eat oh so this young family decide to leave Naomi her husband and her two sons they leave the little town of Bethlehem yes the famous little town of Bethlehem they travel to the land of Moab in search of food maybe about 100 miles away a lot of walking every day I guess two little boys are going to keep saying are we there yet Moab is a border country to Israel. Historically the Jews didn't really get on with the Moabites. It goes back to when the Jews were looking for the promised land. Uh, it actually says in scripture, no Moabite shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. Why? Well because they were inhospitable. So because they were inhospitable to Moses and the people of Israel hundreds of years ago, it says well we shouldn't treat them with any respect. So, well, we'll come back to that because that is quite important. The people of Moab to 10 generations are to be treated as sort of second class. do not quite work out like that, as we'll see. So this family then arrive in Moab, the husband and the wife and the two sons. We presume they do have at least some food to eat for a while. But then Naomi's husband dies. She's left with just her two sons and her sons grow up and get married to local girls. Over the, a period of about 10 years this happens. So she has the support of her two sons even if she's lost her husband, poor woman. Things seem to be going well and then her sons both die. Well, we don't know why or how, we're just told that this is what happens to this poor woman called Naomi. She's lost her husband, she's lost her sons, which means in that society there's no visible means of support. So she decides to head back to Bethlehem, perhaps find a distant relative there to help her out. So her two daughters-in-law, and they're called Orpah, which apparently is where Oprah Winfrey gets her name from a spelling mistake, and the other one's called Ruth, as in Ruth. These are good girls who say they'll go back to Israel with her, but he tells them, no, you'd be better off staying in Moab. After all, the Moabites really aren't much liked in Israel. So Naomi says to them, go back each of you to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you've shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. So she prays for them, these two women, that they'll find happiness in another marriage. But Naomi, well, she also thinks that God must be right against her. I mean, he's taking her husband and her two sons. She's understandably be bitter. And she even wants to change her name to bitter. So the two daughter-in-laws, Orpah and Naomi, they have a choice. Do they stay in the land where they were born and leave Naomi to her fate? Or do they go back to Bethlehem with Naomi? Well, they're going to be treated as sort of unwanted immigrants. Well, Orpah does perhaps the more sensible thing she chooses to stay where she is, but Ruth decides to go with Naomi and she has one of the most moving speeches in the whole Bible. She says, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people would be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I'll be buried. Where you go, I will go. That's sort of a Ruth's catchphrase. Such a profound thing to say and very poignant. She has loyalty to Naomi far beyond what Naomi would expect. Ruth has so much compassion for her mother-in-law that she's prepared to leave her homeland, travel to a very uncertain future in another land. So off they go, arrive in Bethlehem just in time for the harvest. Now there's an ancient law in Israel about harvest and fields. If you have a field of barley or wheat or such like, when you come to the harvest, 
you're not allowed to harvest the very edges of the field you're supposed to leave that for the poorest in society those who don't have a job or anything and just need some basic sustenance so they can come along and just glean the very edges of the field get any leftovers that's been left from the big harvest so Ruth goes off to do that in a field that belongs to a chap called Boaz Boaz sees this strange woman working in the field and far from excluding her as a Moabitess invites her for tea oh, so why are you being so nice to me asks Ruth and Boaz tells her well he knows all about Ruth he's heard all about her how she's gone with her mother-in-law gone where she's gone looked after her, her mother-in-law he thinks well what a wonderful woman she is for doing that may the Lord repay you for what you've done may you be richly rewarded by the Lord the God of Israel under whose wings you've come to take refuge because Ruth chose that she would follow God of course your people will be my God and your God my God is what Ruth had already said she's changed her nationality she's changed her religion anyway Ruth goes home to Naomi tells her what's happened turns out this Boaz who owns the field actually is a distant relative of Naomi's Naomi gives Ruth some rather odd, odd advice she says okay when Boaz is asleep on the threshing floor tonight next to his pile of harvest go lie down next to him and uncover his feet now, there's various explanations for this maybe it's just that well actually you, your feet help you cool down if you've ever woken up with your feet stuck out of the covers that's why so anyway Boaz wakes up it's presumably very dark because you don't want even a candle or an oil lamp next to a big pile of harvested barley or wheat so Ruth says to him spread your corner spread the corner of your garment over me she's asking him for protection for looking after her similarly in age to God sheltering under God's wings and actually it's sort of a, a marriage proposal too and a very forward one at that I mean, they've only had one dinner date but Boaz says yes well there's some sort of legalities which he's got to sort out when he does that just the next morning so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife they had a son Naomi had a grandson whom she helped to look after it all ended happily ever after and the local women praise God for how he's worked in this situation and that's actually how the whole book of Ruth works it doesn't mention God that much but it's all about God's plan for these people to restore to Naomi what she lost to give Ruth a second chance at a family even though it's all in God's hands it does require still Ruth to do the right thing she could have been Ruthless with Naomi and sent her off to fend for herself but Ruth is Ruth she has compassion and loyalty where you go I'll go that's the essence of Ruth is there anyone we've ever said that to so what do we make of this story where well Naomi loses everything even if she does get it back why did God have to take her sons and her husband away in the first place well honestly we don't know don't always know why things go wrong in this world what they do did then they still do there's farmers around the world today wondering why is the harvest failed why have they not got enough to eat the only answer we have well is to give thanks for what we do have and share it with those who haven't as far as we possibly can to have the compassion of Ruth to look after the welfare of someone else particularly the vulnerable before we look to our own needs we don't know how God's plan will work out for us in this world but to have faith means to hold on that he does have a plan for us despite everything God does have our ultimate well-being in mind that he longs to spread the corner of his robe over us to give us the protection that we care that we crave so perhaps there are many lessons we've got to learn because well we don't know very much really there's one footnote to the story of Ruth almost the very ending shows us something vitally important in all this that God has a bigger plan see Ruth's son has a very special place in God's plan for the whole of Israel and the whole world because he is later he becomes the grandfather to no lesser person than King David 
you know, the giant slaying, songwriting superstar king of Israel, who is himself an ancestor of Jesus. God's plans stretch out across time, far bigger than we can get our heads around. So he provides us food to eat. Without Ruth's compassion and loyalty, there wouldn't have been a King David or Hosannas to the son of David on Palm Sunday. God's plans are always bigger than ours. And all we can do really is give thanks for what he does. Father God, we thank you for harvest time. We thank you for the food that grows in our fields. We thank you for the rain and the sun. We thank you for the farmers who work on the land, who sow and till and reap, and for the results of their labours that we all enjoy. Please help us never to take the food that we have for granted, but always to thank you for providing it for us. Especially at harvest, we rejoice at your abundant provision for all the blessings that you pour upon us. We thank you too that as we received, so we can give, passing on your blessings in a chain of giving that stretches around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring before you the people of the world who are in great need. You know the troubles that people face, drought and famine, plague and pestilence, wars and rumours of wars. You hear their prayers as they call to you for help. Father God, help them and help us to be a part of your answer to those prayers. Join us together with all those in need so that we truly are their neighbours, helping them in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all for whom COVID is still bringing suffering, often in secondary and unexpected ways. We pray for the Christian community in Vietnam at this time, for whom COVID has made the harvest all the more difficult. And as a minority, they often get the blame for anything that goes wrong. Give them encouragement and patience to face this difficult time and let them rejoice in their fellowship with one another and with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of the food banks in our own country. Forgive us for our part in a system where, even in such a rich country as ours, there's still unfairness and so many people in need. We pray too for the nations who haven't had access to vaccines as readily as we have here. We pray that those in authority are more willing to share this new and vital resource. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the staff and the many volunteers who help to run our food banks. We pray and give thanks for the team at Cheadle, those that work in Stoke and Newcastle and Leek. We pray for the local people who take gifts along after our service. We pray for all who contribute to food banks that those gifts may be used well. We pray they may go to the people who need them most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for all those in need of Father God's healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we pray for those who've been bereaved, especially those who've lost someone close to them recently, for whom the pain of bereavement is still very sharp. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in any kind of need, and especially today, for those without a decent meal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.